everyone. Um, so I'm here from GitHub to talk to you a little bit about the things that we do on GitHub uh, to help make map uh, excuse me, mapping better together. Uh, so first off, I'm Mike Skalnik. You can find me online as Skalnik just about every single place. I'm very fortunate to have a very unique last name. So, um, and I'm a web developer at GitHub. Specifically, I work on rendering more rich files, so 3D files, maps, um, things like that. So we do viewing and diffing of both of those. Um, but first, let's look back. Let's look at some past trends with the internet, um, specifically. So before the web kind of standardized around HTTP and using your web browser uh, as, you, as you do now, there was a plethora of different formats out there. Um, some of which uh, you may remember, or perhaps you never touched, but through a lot of trial and error and experimentation, HTTP kind of became this de facto standard that everyone started using. Um, and the draw, or like the thing to pull out of this is that through a lot of different trial and error, we kind of came to something that works well enough that we're, we're all using the same kind of thing now. Um, as time continues, we're seeing a lot of XML being replaced by JSON, just as a simpler, as a simpler uh, format. Um, and XML can be quite large. So making something that's a bit easier for humans to parse and is still not, um, still not challenging for computers to parse as well. So as time continues, we're seeing the simplicity of JSON kind of win out over XML. SOAP, which was a way of structuring APIs, and still is, but is slowly being replaced and being uh, replaced by the more popular REST format. Um, so SOAP is uh, pretty tied, at least in my uh, experience. I don't know, perhaps someone can correct me, but I always, every time I wrote or dealt with SOAP, it was tied strictly to XML. So due to the lack of flexibility, REST being a much more flexible open format was easier to implement for other things. So if people are using something to make a JSON API, um, SOAP became a little bit more challenging. Um, and continuing, we're seeing things like uh, proprietary formats like PDFs and Word, what, which still have their use case, PDF specifically just for layout purposes. But um, we see Markdown increasing in popularity. Uh, simple format, again, uh, and if it gets the job done, we just need a dumb format that we can have smarter tools around. So you can have something that looks like Microsoft Word but really just spits out Markdown. Um, and we're s seeing this even further with mapping stuff now. So we have shapefiles and the Google KML files and you're seeing much more GeoJSON and TopoJSON files start uh, popping out. And they're not perfect. Uh, they're very bulky. Shape files tend to be smaller and more compact. Um, but as Computers are progressing with more formats, uh, like more size and more speed. Um, these simpler formats are becoming more and more popular. So what are all the things we've kind of learned from all these trends? Well, first off, open formats almost always win out over closed ones. Um, people want to make things better. They see something, they have a problem with something, and they, a lot of people want to improve it. If they have the skill set too, uh, they want to open up and tinker and improve things. So. Having things be open helps everyone. Um, and on that same note, collaborating on formats is always winning, or it tends to win out over siloed labor. So if a single company is working on a thing by themselves, it eventually it seems to start dying out at some point. Um, when it's open and everyone can work together on it, uh, it continues to get better and better, and people start uh, adopting that standard. On top of that, simplicity wins out over complexity. So with XML, we're seeing JSON do better. Simple files, simpler things, easier for humans to understand, are winning out over complex things. Um, and not everything that we do is perfect. Like, people can argue that REST has a bunch of problems, and that's fine, but the fact that it works kind of wins out over its uh, lack of perfection. So really, dumb formats and really smart tools. So formats, if you're trying to change a format, you have to look and realize that the ones in the past are still going to be around. So changing a format, upgrading a format is really difficult. Whereas just upgrading tools that work with a simple format is much easier. You can send out a new piece of software much easier than you can say, go and update all of your old files. So like, upgrading tools is easier than upgrading a format. 
excuse me. So why does any of this really matter? Well, first let's talk about a quick story. Um, this is my first time in Washington, D.C. Uh, actually, also my first time at State of the Map. But um, I got here a bit early, and I was looking for a place uh, with both Wi-Fi and beer. Um, wanted to sit down and work as I could drink a beer. So Yelp actually turned out to be banned in my hotel, which was weird. Like every time I opened it, it was just like, didn't load. Uh, Foursquare wasn't giving me back good information. Um, so I asked a friend of mine, a coworker, who many of you might know, Ben Balter. Um, and I'm like, I just want a place where I can get something cold to drink and have some internet. And he's like, oh, I actually have the perfect thing for you. And I'm like, of course you do. You have everything. Um, and he sat down and he showed me this GitHub repository, DC Wi-Fi Social, that he made. Um, and so this, he actually sat down and he was like, oh, I know like five bars that have Wi-Fi and I like working in. So he put them on a map and uploaded them to GitHub and then just left it there open. And now there's like 20 of them because people are like, oh yeah, you don't have my favorite bar. And they just go and send a pull request and add it in. And what's even more interesting with this is how this is now being changed. So this is getting forked and people are changing how it's used. So there's one fork where you can find DC bars that have no TVs. So someone's just like, I want, I hate like going to a bar that's filled with people watching sports. Like it's not my thing. People are loud and rowdy. I just kind of want to hang out, drink a beer, whatever. So they started collecting a bunch of bars that have no TVs. Or we're seeing it used for other cities. So there's now one for Richmond. Same exact idea, bars with Wi-Fi in Richmond. Um, but my favorite out of all of these is this one. Completely different name, Tip Tipa. But this is actually using the same exact kind of format to map polio vaccination centers in Israel. So as someone finds a place that they can get a polio vaccine, they can send it to GitHub, send it to this one repository, and people have a single thing that they can uh, access and find polio vaccination centers. Um, and I found this just perusing through like how have people changed these files. So we have OpenStreetMap already showing open is better than closed, and collaboration is awesome. But most of that stuff is on the base layer, the base map. Um, but we want to collaborate on the higher level data, not just the low level base, but everything above that. So OpenStreetMap won't probably, like maybe in the future, but at this time it won't tell you all the drinking establishments with Wi-Fi. So we can actually do that together with uh, tools like GitHub. So what do we actually do at GitHub that helps this happen? And I'm not saying that we do it the best, so if you guys have suggestions on how to make this better, I'm all ears, but basically all I'm trying to do is encourage more people to work together on, uh, on data. So if you commit any GeoJSON file, we actually take it in and we'll render you a sweet map. So this is that same Wi-Fi drinking um, repository. And like I said, so GitHub's bread and butter is really that we can show you the difference between things. So as time continues, we can show you how these files have changed. So someone added this bar in the bottom corner. So we can actually we highlight that in green for you. Uh, if they get removed, we'll show you it in red. We do the same thing with all property information. So if you click on these and it's changed, like the Wi-Fi password has changed, we'll actually highlight that change for you as well. We support the entire GeoJSON spec. So if you can do it in GeoJSON, we can show it. So it's, we're using Leaflet, so it's pretty simple uh, to support the entire thing. Um, and we do clustering over 1,000 markers. Custom markers, we support the entire Mapbox Mackie icon set, or Maki icon set. I don't know the pronunciation of that. Um, and we also allow anything that's on, any maps that are on GitHub to be embedded. So you can actually move it somewhere else, have it on your, in, your, in a blog post. So one of the great examples of this is, if you look at any of the meetups that GitHub hosts on our blog, all of those are hosted via a gist. So you can actually click on them, and if the map is wrong, like people can do an update, and it's just embedded right there in the blog post. Um, but the biggest win is that you're treating your data as code. So you can go back and see how things have changed over time. Um, so you can look at the first commit to the DC Wi-Fi social repository and see that there's one, one place, one establishment, and see how it changes through time. Or you can see how these polio vaccination centers are popping up more, and maybe at some point they'll start diminishing. And what becomes more interesting is 
as you look at it after a period of time. So at the beginning, it kind of seems like, oh, this is kind of stupid. Like, why am I taking the time to make sure that I have all of my data sitting here as code? But when you go back in time and look at it later, that's when it's really valuable. So lastly, I want to ask you guys if you have any idea how we can encourage this to happen more. I'm really curious. Um, I've been doing what I can at GitHub, and I've been doing this with my coworkers, but we're not experts. So if you guys have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Um, so lastly, these slides are available online if you want to pull them down, and that's about it. So if you have any questions, um, here for the next like 15 minutes. What? Yeah, I can leave that up there for you guys. Or if you contact me on any medium, like I'm happy to send you the link. Yeah? What are the hardest problems you've found with dealing with geodata within, within GitHub? So the question was, what are the biggest problems I've experienced uh, with geodata and Git? Most of it is file size, um, especially if the file size explodes, um, as geodata can. It can be a little bit tricky. Um, so splitting files, or like splitting Splitting a large data set into smaller pieces is the big win there, but that's been number one big problem. How much of your GeoJSON, TurboJSON processing stack itself, the server side part of the stack is open source, so if you want to get embedded in something like that, you have an editorial website that uses maps and you want to. So so the question was how much of the processing stack in our server side is open source, correct? Yes. Um, it's actually, everything we do is client side. So the server is extremely simple and just serves JavaScript. We pull down um, the GeoJSON and Leaflet parses it and maps it. We use Mapbox base layers and that's about it. Or base maps. What's up? You just demonstrated a way that people can make data, uh, deal with data that's interesting to them and make it data more. Uh, not in the easy way. That'd be nice to, so the question was, um, we've made it easy to put your data on GitHub to collaborate on, but can we contribute back to OSM uh, in some way? So we link to OSM on all of our maps, as far as I know, um, but we don't have an easy way of taking that data and sending it straight to OSM. That's a good idea. I haven't thought about that. Maybe I should ask Ben, but um, I'm curious why you didn't just run an overpass period. Honestly, I just I asked Ben before I even took the time to do any of that, so that might be a good question for him. <laughs> because you're creating a set of data that's outside. Of right. Just OSM. Does OSM actually have all of the Wi-Fi information as well? Like, Wi-Fi tool, yes. Cool. I didn't know that. Good to know. Um. KML would be easier, but so the idea, uh, the question was if we we're wanting to implement other formats. KML might happen. Uh, shape files are a little tricky just because they're harder to parse, but yeah. So it was the same kind of sentiment with open formats. Things that I can, e that are easier to parse are much more likely to happen, right? And it's also much trickier to diff things like shape files. Working on it soon. So for services like Git Spatial, is there anything on the GitHub side that you can do to make things like that work better and easier? Uh, I'm not familiar with Git Spatial. You, it, you, you go to gitspatial.com, I think, and it indexes your repo, all the GeoJSON, and then if you provide an API, you can do search on the Kind of okay. Uh, so we have a full API, so I would imagine that that's reasonable to do. Um, we also do full, like, it would be nice to add some um, geospatial information to our search. Our search is pretty, it's not bad for GitHub. Uh, it's a giant elastic search cluster, so that would be in interesting to add uh, some, like, geospatial information there. So, uh, in your presentation, how you commit GeoJSON file to GitHub and you overlay in the screen map yep. within GitHub. And some of that looks at GIS data and GitHub tracks changes. It would be really nice to 
not only you're displaying the data there, but like also with the statistics of changes over time and visualizing that. I mean, so if you're, you're going to leverage that tracking changes aspect, I mean, you ought to just do that visually as well. So we have some of that at the um, repository level. So for the entire project being contained, we have a little bit of uh, metrics and visualization of change, but not anything more specific to like the actual geographical points. That's a good idea as well. Anyone else? Cool. So you can find me. I'm here all weekend. But if you have any more questions, let me know.